Hello everyone, this is The Nameless One. Today we are going to go over the highlights for episodes 7 and 8 of Lost Memories. Without further ado, let's begin. The first clip is immediately following their second encounter with a storyteller. They find themselves following a mysterious blue glow to one of the legends of the Wastes. Roll clip. Doc is aware that you are in the vicinity of the main section of what is known as the Ever-Burning Pits. Hey, lovely. Add to the scenery, babe. More fire. Doc is welcome to fill as much information as he feels fit. You guys do see, like, areas that you could walk through, but um, you do hear the sound of something crying. We're moving like, in not, the opposite like, direction. Not, not dainty tears, but, like, deep, uh, sorrow-wracked sobbing. Full-blown sobbing. Don't yes. fall the frying. Keep your eyes to the fire. What? There is obvious paths through if you want to attempt to make it through. And I will note path. that as you guys get closer, you do not feel actual heat from the flames. This is not normal fire. Yeah, but the fire that's going to be closer is uh, actual fire. It burns away all you are until only sadness is left. Ooh, spooky. Oh, that's why is the it meth is going in here? I, mean, I don't know any uh, medical procedure that could do the same thing, so... I assume it's magical. Yeah, and then there's someone crying like that. I mean, someone got stuck here. <gasps> Wasn't the uniform from before? We should leave. Yeah, we should. Leave. I'm a fan of leaving. If you if you want Nasa, you can try to do your. Uh, I don't know if you did your knowledge check or not. I will try. Yes, your hidden lore. I fail. You fail. You can't tell whether or not this is spirit driven or not. You'd like to say maybe, but you can't say yes or no. Mm. And. Did you try rolling Thaumology already, or...? Uh, I, I have I'm losing track of who did what checks. I will do a Thaumology check, if you are giving me the option. It is always an option. Yep. There is it never is not an option, option to... So uh, I succeed by six. You don't recognize this as any kind of, like... It would make sense if it was an illusion or evocation spell, but you don't really recall anything quite like this. Okay. But you do have a feeling it is, in fact, magical in nature. More of that gut feeling than an actual, yet, like, yes, this is magic. It, it feels like magic. It looks like magic. It's most likely magic. <laughs> yeah. Let's try to navigate so, through the path. Okay. So there is the need for a flat dexterity check on the way through. Oh, God. Because there are paths, but they are narrow paths. Can I just fly over them? You could. Or hover? I, pass. I, I prefer to hover so, Doc, as you uh, uh, as you were making your way across, you uh, step on a loose stone, and in a wild attempt to grab something, accidentally grab Moop. Ooh! So, ah! Moop and Doc have slid down into one of the pits. I cast the spell magic on the pit they fall into. So just, like, you just kind of fart it in the general direction of the pit? <laughs> I succeed by six on that pit. You do see the flames stutter in the vicinity of your dispel magic, but they quickly rush back in to fill the gap. For the two that fell in, you don't actually feel any heat, but you do feel an overwhelming sense of sorrow. I should have stabbed more people. That away. <laughs> uh, I was already feeling this. Wait Go a minute, ahead. is that what someone else is in this pit? Now that you've had a moment to, like, Steady yourself after, you know, being yoinked down into a pit by Doc. You do notice there is a decent sized cave that would admit two ponies standing side by side and two and a half standing on top of each other. I've already pulled. Uh, There's no fire in the cave, right? The cave seems so, to be oh, devoid of flames. Moop is going in cave. Moop does anybody cave. follow? Does anybody follow the Moop? Probably go help keep her safe. I look at the fire and at the cave and at the fire. At the party, and back at the cave. I've already pulled the dock out of the flames. <laughs> yes, you you have ex successfully extracted the dock. Nassau and Moop have gone into the cave. I'm going to follow. Doc, what does Doc do? Doc just got out of the fire pit of sadness. Doc can go back to the fire pit of sadness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm choosing not to go into the fire pit of sadness either. <laughs> okay, so for my two that have made the bit. trek into the fire pit of sadness. We're just gonna call it the fire pit of sadness now. <laughs> yeah. When, once you or three actually, once you three get down into the cave itself, it leads into a fairly short tunnel. That once you guys get into it, the first thing you notice 
is there's a fairly large raised section in the middle of the cave with something on the middle. It's raised above your eye line, though, so you're going to have to get closer to take a look. I raise myself up, flying, and see if I can get a look. So as you come up over the lip of the, uh, what appears to be like a shaped pedestal once you get closer, roughly shaped, not like masterfully carved or anything. It looks like somebody slowly chipped away to make it into like a, a pedestal, basically. You see the uh, mm-hmm. sleeping form of Luna. You I can't guess. tell that she is in, in fact still alive because she is breathing. But she seems to be unresponsive from where you are. You see- I just, I pause. I look at the other two, and it's like, you two are not going to believe this. Luna's up here. Luna? Yeah. How? What? Take me up there. Take me up there. I whisper over. Who's Luna? One of the princesses. I'm going to pick up Boop, and I don't know if I can pick Nessa up and bring her up on the lip. I like the fact that y'all are just ignoring the two bodies who have refused. Well, also the Poop Ring that refused to go down into the sorrow it's time for Crusade to go Ooh, the three this kids. Is, so, this is wild. Yeah. That's actually Luna. I think we should wake her up. And she could have been here for a very long time for all we know. I don't know enough about magic to like know if she's under a spell. Let's just try waking her up politely and see if she responds to that. Do you think we should grab the others and have them come? Uh, put me down next to Luna. And go tell them what we found. I don't think they'll come in here for that, but I'll try waking her up while you go out. Okay, I drop Boop off next to Luna. Then I also bring the saw up. I pick her up and drop her onto the uh, the pedestal as well. And then I go fly okay. back out to tell the others. You have been informed that one of the former princesses of Equestria are, in, in fact, inside the uh, cave. I, I have to go see this. Yes. Probably Haberdash. Luna, it's Luna. So you it. can, uh, As the saying the goes, violence oh, is always the answer. You get no response. Uh, I oh, slide down. I wonder it. why she's not it's responding. Sadness. Maybe she's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> do I feel sad yeah. upon sliding into the fire pit of sadness? You do feel the sorrow. To describe it, the fear you felt from the scarecrow was like attacking you. This almost seems like a distracted feeling of sorrow. Like you're, you're feeling somebody else's sorrow, but it's not paying I'm attention feeling, to you at the moment. I'm feeling a sorrow that isn't my own. Yes. I just feel sad generally. No, I, Does the doc follow? Uh, sure, why not? I'll eat myself back into depression and despair. <laughs> <laughs> Is that supposed to be a bad force for this thing? We also guide the blue brain in the pit of sadness. Yes. Yes, I was going to guide the Blue Brain back and in. Blue Brain, because of disease. Blue Brain immediately that. starts crying, but not in like <laughs> a sobbing way. It's it looks more like his eyes are watering. But it, it, <laughs> he it, 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 basically falling down his face. Like, no, he is basically reaction. drooling from his eyes as well as his mouth now. Uh, He's I, so, so I uh, leave the bed to Luna. Uh, when you guys get to the cave where Moop and Nasa are sitting with Luna, the two of them are sitting next to her on what seems to have been carved out for something yeah. slightly larger than a, your average pony. And if you want, you guys can go ahead and try and take a look at her. You do have medical professional can do medical things now. And I am going to look for signs of uh, magical tampering on her. I fail. <laughs> oh god. I fail the real bad. As bad as I did earlier. Did you hit your head on the pedestal? Is that what happened? You got distracted by Luna and hit your head on the pedestal. I can't lift the doll. To do a medical thing. I wouldn't do what so, I can. So, as far as you can tell, medically speaking, she is perfectly healthy from what what you have at your disposal and what knowledge you know. Interesting. So there's, this might be as an far as you can entirely tell, new genus of poo brain. <laughs> um, I don't think it's poo brain. Well, at least poo brain you can uh, walk around when commanded. She's just asleep. <gasps> oh no, yeah. don't tell me. Oh no, I think she has dragon nap. Uh, what? Everybody dragon roll nap? perception. Ah, okay, so everybody like... passed. So oh, as oh. you guys are sitting around Luna, 
You hear the sounds of something large moving through the opposite side of the cave. You notice, too, that there is a tunnel on the other side. And you can hear the sounds of what sound like large hoof steps. Oh. What do you... I do the sneak. You're trying to stealth? Yes. I'm stealthing as well. I will also stealth. Okay, good. I'm not really trying to hide. I'm just thinking out loud. I... It's like dragon nap is basically when it's like basically makes a person nap from anywhere between a hundred to a thousand years. So as although you, past a thousand point, it's sleep. As you guys are going into hiding, Doc's just standing behind a rock at this point. But I, I think I'm just standing in front of, uh, of Luna. I, if I know I can't. Well. If I know I can't hide, I'm just going to present myself. <laughs> <laughs> so might, might as well try to play a power move. If I can't be not I'm still next to Luna, just not giving a shit. What you guys end up seeing is yet another absolutely massive alicorn. Like an absolute unit? Yes. The body of it, what you can still see of it, is matted black fur. The rest of it seems to have, like, burned away as blue and purple flame licks around the edges of what remains of him. There is a large red gemstone that seems to be set in his chest. His eyes are flaming pits of orange, and his wings drag the ground as he stomps into the room and pauses, looking from you guys to Luna before the flame begins to rage. Get out! I'm sorry. You were just trying to escape the fire. No, 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 no. This is a sigh say get out. Understood. Goodbye. I'll, uh... (laughs) You get my invoice sometime next week. Right? (laughs) Is everybody uh, making their escape? You guys, don't, you guys really don't even try to talk things out. Really? Nope. I pick a loop and show you shut up. But I want to talk. I am shy. I just, We're leaving. As you, as you guys uh, <laughs> as you guys sprint through the tunnel, you all you hear is an enraged roar from behind that sounds very uh, decidedly unpony-like. Yeah, I am not messing with that. I'm really playing faster now. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, that definitely did not come from the alicorn. No, I, uh, yeah. it did come from that alicorn. And then uh, set Moop no. up top of the uh, ledge of the pit. On, is it weird that we get information that it seems oddly fitting for the situation we find ourselves in yet again? Great. <sighs> Is it following us? <laughs> so, as, as you guys escape the uh, the tunnel, it collapses behind you guys. The next clip is of Nasa noticing something in the distance. Roll clip. I think I saw something. A uh, what? I think I saw a zebra head into the direction of the epiphy. You saw another zebra? I think so. It is hard to be certain. I choose to look like the saw now. I want to attempt history knowledge based off of what I knew of Ponyville. Well, that would just be general knowledge for you. It's not history yeah. for you. Uh, uh, yeah, general history. Uh, what would I do for... It would be an intelligence minus two. Oh, never mind. Zebras ever free. Started some gears, but just sputtered out. It, the, I have a thought. I have a... No, never mind. That was just gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brain gas. So what do? Yeah, well, I guess we should just keep going, because, uh... Do you want yeah. to try to follow the mysterious, uh... I want to follow the zebra if I can. Uh, I feel like th- that is right now our lead. If, if they have any knowledge on, as to what is underneath these fire pits, other than Luna... I to the So, is that what the party's going to do? Yep. Yep. Okay. Our final clip is of the party following the zebra into the woods, and the events that followed. Roll clip. Doc, take five points of damage from a rock. I'm gonna look <laughs> off in the uh, direction that the rock came from. Go ahead and roll perception. I, I also perception. look in the general direction of where the, the rock came from. I succeed by three. When you look into the woods, because Doc looks into the woods, sees trees and things. When you look into the woods, you see something shimmering in the background. I'm stealthily moving. As you are moving along, you get whacked over the head with a stick. Me? Yes, you. As you look at your new assailant, and you find yourself face to face to an Achu warrior, you hear another voice, this one female from the woods, say, Mabinguni. So, Petrol, as you are flying, you feel a sharp 
pain between your shoulders as you take 12 points of damage from a zebra land, basically landing a axe kick in between your shoulder blades. Ah, uh, I am going to call out to the true warrior and hopefully other zebras that can hear me. Achet, achet, achet. I'm saying uh, stop. In zebra. The uh, Achu and Romani both look at you and say, in a heavily accented version of your particular dialect, and why would we listen to a demon? I am not a demon. This time the Achu says, you survived a scarecrow, and you went into the demon's hole and came out alive. Yes, because we ran like hell. We ran because those things are dead up. They're by the stars, I swear. They're evil spirits that work here, but we are not of them. If you have any shamans among you, check me. I am not very spiritually attuned. They look at each other before looking back in the woods, and uh, a female zebra steps out that you don't have any problem recognizing. It's a Starkateri. Oh, oh no. my god. That is actually worrisome. It <laughs> might actually have been very bad thwarting on my part. Am, am I able to um, take aim while this is happening? Are you going to take aim or no? I mean, they did just attack us. Why shouldn't I? I would also... Uh, point out that uh, after that you are not in the sky anymore, but you also have a Romani standing over you. Are By sure the way, at this point, the uh, the Zenkori also steps out of the forest. They are wearing a cloak that makes it very hard to see them, but they've taken the hood off. The Starkateri is whispering to the Achu, what do? I'm going to start to listen. So you catch something about demon, tribe, and fighting. Also mention of the uh, spell spawn that you have run across, just like a zebra version of the names of them. We have killed them. The hell spawn demon from the start, probably. Uh, just they zebra, actually don't there. reference no offense. out of their names. They do not reference them as anything related to the stars, surprisingly. I am trying to tell them that these hell spawn, these evil creatures, we were killing them as well. The Achu looks at you, and he says that he will offer a trial by combat if you want to prove that you are not a uh, spell spawn. Why can you not tell by my simple cult? I have these aura stripes, not like those hell spawn. He tells you it isn't the first time that they've had someone claiming to be who they weren't. Yeah, so they mean, like, I, I'm a very good shot. <laughs> How about this? If I say I am who I am, that means I am very good at hunting and I am very good at cooking. Because that is the aura way. So, can I prove myself like that? He frowns and looks at the uh, star Kateri, who then looks at a rock on a string that she's been swinging around this whole time. Does she have a map in front of her? Yes, she does. She's probably consulting Asher or one of those other stars. And after a couple moments of continued whispering, he says that it is too easy for anyone to be a good shot, but only zebras fight like zebras. Very well. And I mm-hmm. assume the stance that I was taught. You're still going with the... Uh, yeah. Yes. For uh, petrol, did you actually try to take aim? Give my circumstances no. Okay, so the Achu picks up their stance. He goes ahead and gestures for you to strike first. Uh, I will start with the feint. He goes in for normal punch. At this point, you you are you are now of the grapple. So it is now your turn. Uh, how do I ungrapple? You are still grappled. I passed by four. Does he beat me by over four? That is. He beat you by one. Achu does knee strike. So you take eight points of damage. You have eaten a knee to the gut. I cannot get out of the grapple. <laughs> So Take another six. You are unconscious. The Achu looks at the little unconscious Zeb and turns to the others and you guys just hear him shouting at Zebra. That's all we have time for today. A huge thanks to Hacks for editing the video. Additional thanks to Forever Free Brony for the intro, outro, and background music. If you enjoy what I am doing and would like to help support me, then check out my Patreon. A huge thanks to those that already have, especially my priest tier patrons, Gilded Page, Haxros, Ellis Xander, and Princess Starglow. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Everyone have a great day and drink water.